Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech Tuesday tutorial number 47. Today we cover how to set up protected sheets and ranges in Google Sheets. So let's say you have a spreadsheet that you're collaborating with others on, but you only want them to modify part of it. Maybe you want them to approve entries or just fill out one column and you don't want to risk them changing anything else. Maybe you just want your headers left alone. In any case, you want to protect this document. Well, the first thing I would do actually before I turn on protection is I would recommend making the sheet kind of inviting and helpful to your editors. Make it obvious where they can and cannot make changes to the document. First, I would freeze any header rows and any columns that you want to kind of stay static. You can freeze rows by using the line above the first row there, above the one. If you hover your mouse cursor over that, you'll see that it changes to a hand. You click and drag that down and that will freeze that top row. If you keep dragging down further, it'll freeze additional rows. But that way, whenever they scroll up and down, they can kind of see the headers very well. Secondly, I would create new columns for any information you might need for them to put in there. In this scenario, we have some information on sessions and we want people to approve these sessions and maybe add some comments. So I'll need a couple of columns for that. You right click and insert columns pretty easily and you can resize them. So I might call this one approval and call this one comments. Then I may change the color of those so that I can tell people just modify the yellow. I might choose to freeze the approval and comments columns so that whenever people scroll to the right and left, these stay frozen as well. Another thing that's very helpful is validation. So I might come in here and select the entire row and say, I really only want approval to be yes, no, or needs revision. So you go in here to data and set the data validation and you can choose from a range on a sheet or you can actually just put in a list of items yourself. So pull that down, choose list of items and type out the options. Yes, comma, no, comma, needs revision. Then uh, choose whether or not you want to show a warning or reject input entirely for that. And if you want some help text to show up, save it. And when they click on here, they'll have their pull down options. You can then remove validation on the top row so you don't have that warning thing there. Okay, so the next thing we do is actually protect the document. Now it's important to know that when you set up protection, you are really specifying what parts of the document are locked, not what parts of the document are open for editing for other people. That's a very important distinction. So in this case, I'm going to want to lock the entire sheet except for this one area here, these two columns where they can make changes to. So one of the things I can do is either I can select all of these columns and lock them, or I can lock the entire sheet and make exceptions to columns A and B. So the first way is to lock columns C all the way through the end. I select all of them first, and then I come in here to data, protected sheets and ranges, and then set permissions on this. Now I might just call this a locked area and then hit set permissions. And at this point, I can choose based on who has access to the document already, who's going to get access to that area. Notice I'm the owner, but Daniel here is uh, actually an editor as well. And I can just deny access there. Now that would basically stop him from making any changes whatsoever, but I still have full range and I can make changes without any kind of warning. So you have two options. You can either strictly enforce this or you can show warnings. Warnings are kind of helpful because they also protect you from making changes by mistake, but they pretty much allow anyone to make any change. It just pops up as a warning. So we'll try that one. I'll show you what it does. So now if I go in here and I try to make a change at all, it's going to pop up and say, hey, you're trying to edit part of this sheet. You shouldn't do this. And they can cancel that and it will not accept the change. Or they can hit OK and it will accept it. Now another option is to set protection in the second way, and that's protect the entire sheet with a, an exception of these columns. So I can come in here and choose this again. This time I'm going to protect the entire sheet, conference proposals except certain cells. And in this case, I'll come in here and click select data or range and select A, B columns. Then I set the permissions in the same way before, give it a description if I want to, and then choose how people can edit this. Either strict, you can't make changes whatsoever, there's no warning given, or show a warning but allow them to make changes. So let's do a strict one this time and come in here and uncheck that person and hit done. I can continue to make any kind of changes to it, but no one else can. So we can test that here. I'm now logged in with my other personal account, the one that should not be able to make any changes to the rest of the document. I can make changes here, that's fine. If I try to make changes here, 
then it tells me you're trying to edit a protected range and you can't do this. All I can modify are these two columns. Right, so that's really all there is to it. You select the areas you'd like to modify, you go to data and protected sheets and ranges and set up all your different protections. You can have multiple protective ranges in one sheet. So you could say that they could modify these five different sections on the sheet. You can also set up protection separately on different sheets of your same spreadsheet, which is really handy. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. In fact, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Comment in the comment below, leave a suggestion for Tech Tuesday video in the future, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.